Good morning and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am the Reverend Mandy Beal. I am this congregation's senior minister. I am joined in worship leadership this morning by worship associate Abby Shrek, as well as our accompanist Forrest Howell and cantor Brian Shandoval. Our Zoom host this morning is Jane O'Neill and our Zoom greeter is Mary Jo Ebert. BUC is a Unitarian Universalist congregation in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Even in our virtual format, we are a thriving community with a place for everyone. Social justice is one of the ways in which we know ourselves as Unitarian Universalists. We are a capital W welcoming congregation. That is a designation we earned for our commitment of being fully inclusive of gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and their families. We are also a green sanctuary congregation, also with capital letters. That's a designation that means that we are dedicated to protecting our environment. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on our website and on Facebook. After the service, we invite you to stay for a virtual coffee hour. If you are worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you. We have three brief announcements this morning about the ways in which we'll live our congregation's mission and values in the week to come. Today at noon is the third installment of our Getting to Know UU class series. Today's session includes a short history of BUC and a virtual tour of the building. The Zoom link for that is different than the one that you're currently on. Coffee hour will end at 11.45 today so that we can start that class at noon and that separate link is on our calendar. Our second announcement, please join the humanists of BUC this evening at 7 p.m. when the featured speaker will be our own religious education coordinator, Nico Van Ostrand. Nico's talk on religious education at BUC is titled, Look to the Children, and it will be followed by a discussion period. And lastly, our Celebrate Our Community Stewardship Campaign has officially begun. By this time, you should have received your pledge packet through mail or in your mail, nope, through email or in your mailbox. Please fill out that form and send it back also by email, by US Post, or there's a button you can click on our website. Thank you for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And with that, our service will begin. We worship in our separate homes this morning, but we are joined with a multitude of Unitarian Universalists in lighting our chalice. We light this chalice with love and gratitude for the chalice lighters who came before us. 
We light this chalice with love, hope, and respect for those who will come after us. May we tend its flame with care and with joy. Do you hear, oh my friend, in the place where you stand, through the sky, through the land? Do you hear, do you hear, in the heights, on the plain, in the vale, on the main, in the sun, in the rain? Do you hear, do you hear? Through the roar, through the rush, through the throng, through the crush, do you hear in the hush of your soul, of your soul? Hear the cry, feel the thrill, hear the heart's call to will, hear a sigh, startling trill, in your soul, in your soul. From the place where you stand to the outermost strand, do you hear, oh my friend? Do you hear, do you hear? All the dreams, all the dares, all the sighs, all the prayers, they are your, mine, and theirs. Do you hear? Do you hear? Our opening words this morning are, As Surely as We Belong to the Universe by Margaret A. Keep. As surely as we belong to the universe, we belong together. We join here to transcend the isolated self, to reconnect, to know ourselves to be at home, here on earth, under the stars, linked with each other. The mission of Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. That's what we're here to do. The weekly offering is a reconnection with this mission. This is the time of year where we're talking a lot about stewardship and stewardship is pledging support to a larger dream, that vision. And the weekly offering is the weekly re-upping of saying, yes, yes, this week I will do these things in the world. I will encourage people to lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy through the lens of Unitarian Universalism. Is in that spirit that I invite now your offerings for the good works of this community. You can submit your offerings by clicking a button on the website, putting a check in the mail or through Venmo with username at BUCMI. However you choose to give, I ask that you do so with a heart of love and gratitude for each other and for our church. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We come now to a time in our service that we've set aside for the sharing of joys and sorrows with one another. We join this morning as a worshiping body in an edge of change, in a time of deep change, right on the edge of things being so different. We bring with us the individual aspects of our lives and join them here together on the altar of life so that we might be one. We search for meaning in our own lives so that we can find a way forward for our communal life. As we move into another time of transition in our community and in our world, may we be reminded of our aspirations, the aspirations of those who came before us and the aspirations of those who will come after us. May we hold each other in love and support. May we be a source of peace, love and support for each other. May it be so. Amen and blessed be. We have two short readings this morning about what it means to be a UU church. The first is by Reverend Mark Morrison Reed, a retired minister and historian of Black Unitarian Universalists. The central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind us each to all. There is a connectedness, a relationship discovered amid the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others. Once felt, it inspires us to act for justice. It is the church that assures us that we are not struggling for justice on our own, but as members of a larger community. The religious community is essential, for alone our vision is too narrow to see all that must be seen, and our strength is too limited to do all that must be done. Together, our vision widens and our strength is renewed. The second reading is adapted from a work by Elizabeth Tarbox, a white UU minister most known for her work in the late 20th century. And so I say ours is a story of faith and hope and love. I say it is our need for one another that binds us together, that brings us laughing and limping into relationships and keeps us at it when we otherwise might despair at the fix we are in. I say it is the holy we need, the eternal beyond our comprehension, and one place we can find it is here, working and worshiping together. And I say there is a transcendent value worthy of our loyalty upon which we may rest our hearts and its divine manifestation is love.
Well, beloveds, we found ourselves at a unique crossroads, a unique time in the life of our congregation. It's spring, it's stewardship season. We have some hints of a glimmer of a hope of widespread vaccines and I'm about to go on parental leave. This is an excellent opportunity for us to take stock and to dream big. Things are changing and now is the time to think about what that means. And as with most good stories, if not all of them, the key to understanding where we are and where we're going lies in understanding where we've been. Birmingham Unitarian Church was created to bring the promise of liberal religion to the northern suburbs of Detroit. Our founders broke away from what is now the first Unitarian Universalist Church in Detroit with the dream of bringing Unitarianism to their home community. They met in each other's living rooms. They met at Apple Orchard Nursery School and at the YMCA. And when I say they, I know that some of you are still here. But just to bring everybody up to speed, living rooms, a nursery school, and the YMCA. Over the years, BUC has faced many challenges as all churches do. This past year was no exception. We were challenged in ways previously unimagined and pushed into changes we did not want to make. Trust and believe me that nobody was excited about learning how to do everything online. But we've gone through this year together. We did it. We figured it out. Just as those who came before us met wherever they could, we found a way to meet however we could. It's been different and it's been new, but we, are the same us that we've always been. We are a people who love being together. I often hear about how much people are loving virtual coffee hour. It's been a way to create a less intimidating social environment for some and an opportunity for others to break out of the grooves of talking to the same people every week. We've continued to find ways to be together. We've continued many of the other ways that we like to be together other than coffee hours, such as workshops, discussion groups, fellowship meetings like the humanists of BUC and Living by Heart. We even have game nights. Your lay leaders have done all of this because we are a people who love each other and we are a people who love being together whatever it looks like. This is who we've always been. It's just served up with a modern twist now. We have so much to be proud of this year. Our Social and Environmental Justice Council has done a tremendous amount of discernment that has led to the identification of four focus areas economic inequality, civic engagement, environmental action, and racial justice. Having this tighter focus gave our congregation a chance to go deeper into these areas. I'll give a few examples. Our confronting racism meetings have taken on a more distinct shape. We've had lectures and more to come on subjects like the intersection of systemic racism and the healthcare system. Also the disproportionate impact of environmental degradation on people of color. Our climate action group is having events like How Green Can You Go to invite congregants into a hopeful, practical discussion about how each of us can address climate change. I could keep going. Each of our four justice areas has been successful and offered more opportunities for connection to each other and connection to putting our Unitarian Universalism into action. We found continuity in other areas of our congregational life. Our religious education program is still doing great things in new and interesting ways. I know that many of you don't get to see that in action, but there are some really, really good things happening, especially in Goosh, our high school youth group. Our music ministry has carried on in new and innovative well ways as well. It's been different, but it's still going strong. 
And of course, our worship life continues to foster relationships with each other and our faith. Again, I've heard so many heartwarming stories, stories of families who were able to go to church together across great distances, stories of those whose health has kept them out of the sanctuary, and now they feel reconnected, stories of families joined together in worship while a loved one is in the hospital, these and many more stories of people rediscovering the weekly touch point of Sunday morning worship services at Birmingham Unitarian Church. Like those who came before us, we have adapted and thrived because we believe there is something valuable about Unitarian Universalism and about Birmingham Unitarian Church. What we value about BUC is the love that we feel when we are together and the inspiration that we find here to move that love out into the world, to do things with it. We are part of a long line of religious people who believe in the power of human community to create real and meaningful change in the world. That has been handed to us over centuries taking on different contours and contexts. It was found again in Birmingham living rooms in 1948 and we found it yet again this year online. We'll meet to strengthen those bonds of mutual consent and concern however we have to. We are creative and we are tenacious. We still want the opportunities of liberal religion right here in our own backyard, even if our backyards are virtual. It's been a long year, a hard year. We're at the one year anniversary of moving out of our building. It's been hard, but we found a way to do the things that we love the most, fellowship, justice, religious education, music, and worship. The things that we've always done, and we've done them together, just as we've always done. And we'll keep on growing and evolving and bringing with us the best of what we had before and the best of what we found, just as we've always done. What we've been through this past year will change us forever. There is no doubt about that. Our church will never be the same. And yet, we've always been the same, committed to liberal religion and to each other. We're all looking forward to the time when we can be in our building again. We'll probably find a new hybrid online in-person format that will continue to foster relationships across distances. The way will never be the same. It's too soon to know when we will be back in the building or what it will be like, but we do know that it's coming. It's starting to feel attainable. And now is the time to plan for that not too distant, soon to be almost here time after the pandemic. Being on the cusp like this invites us to look back at what was and to dream about what will be. We pull forward the best of yesterday to create the best tomorrow. You are the keepers of that history and you are the builders of that future. You make that happen. There is no church without people. People are the church. Unitarian Universalism is not some monolithic institution. That's why we call it the living tradition. We are Unitarian Universalism. We make Unitarian Universalism together. We make Birmingham Unitarian Church together. And that is holy. That is beautiful. It's fortuitous that we're on the edge of these changes at the outset of stewardship season. It's really unfortunate, but unsurprising that the term stewardship has become a byword for giving money. It's often spoken with a comedic groan or an eye roll. 
And that really actually makes me really sad. I find that attitude limiting. It keeps us from tapping into the full promise and the power of what stewardship can be. Why would we feel begrudging or eye rolly about giving money to our congregation? But more than that, why would we feel begrudging or eye rolly about making our future together? Participating in the annual stewardship campaign is so much more than making a pledge of financial support. The steward is a caretaker, one who loves and protects something that they do not own for the purpose of handing it on to another person when the time is right. It is our duty and our privilege to be entrusted with the care of this congregation that has been a source of care for each of us. We keep our church in trust for those who will come after us just as the generations before held it in trust for us. They found Unitarianism so valuable that they wanted to share it with their neighbors. They left an established church to start their own church in a living room at a nursery school at the Y. They gave of their time and their money to file incorporation papers with the state and what was then called the American Unitarian Association. They put their resources together to hire a minister and a staff and to build our campus, or well, part of it. It meant enough to them that they made it happen. And now it's our turn. What we value about BUC is the love that we feel when we are together and the power that we find here to move that love out into the world to create change. We do this through fellowship, justice, religious education, our music ministry, our worship life draws upon each of these areas and translates Unitarian Universalist values from the abstract to the concrete by addressing the needs and the issues of our day. Your financial support is what makes this possible, but it's more than that. It's how you co-sign on our UU values and bring them into being. It's the part that you play in making them real. It's how we make Unitarian Universalism more than a thought experiment, but something real and tangible. We estimate that we'll only need about $565,000 to make that happen in the coming church year. It's really a small price to pay for the amount of good that BUC does for us and for our community. Each of us has a role in meeting that goal, making those dreams real in the year to come. And I'm not gonna see you for a few months I should be back in worship leadership on Flower Communion Sunday. That's the second Sunday of June. But I leave with every confidence in our lay leaders, including our committee chairs, our board of trustees, and the people who have no title, but just show up and make things happen. I have every confidence in our staff. I have every confidence in you. I can't wait to, to come back and hear the stories of how you came together in my absence, the things you accomplished, the dreams that you laid in store for the coming year, and the support that you've pledged to make those dreams become our reality. I couldn't be more proud to be the senior minister of this congregation. It has meant so much to me to be here in my first ministry and to be a part of the legacy of Birmingham Unitarian Church tenacious, honestly, almost a little scrappy group of people who do the things that they feel need to be done and create so much good and positive change in the world. Participating in the stewardship campaign is just carrying that tradition forward, making it happen in the new year, dreaming those dreams together. It's putting our love and our ideas and our ideals into action. So come be a part of that with us. May it be so. Amen, and blessed be. Please join me in body and spirit in singing hymn number 119, Once to Every Soul and Nation. One. 
comes to every soul and nation, comes the moment to decide. In the strife of truth with falsehood, for the good or evil side. Then to stand with truth is noble, when we share its wretched crust. Ere that cause bring fame and profit, and tis prosperous to be just. Though the cause of evil prosper, yet tis truth alone is strong. Though its portion be the scaffold, and upon the throne be wrong. Then it is the brave one chooses, while the coward stands astride. Till the multitude make virtue of the faith they have denied. And so now go out into this world of ever-changing, ever-growing love, life, and challenge. Go now out and take with you the love and the care of this congregation, the desire that we have to be together and to make Unitarian Universalism something real in this world. Go now in peace. <laughs>